everyone, welcome back. Let's look at section 1.4. This would be problematic methods of data collection. So this is bad ways to collect data. These are things you shouldn't do. These are methods that should never be used when conducting a statistical study. Um, the problems that arise with these are so large that they cannot be fixed uh, by even properly applying the formulas you learn. So we're gonna learn how to do all these statistics throughout the semester, and if we have bad data, it's pointless. Um, so let's first look at volunteer sampling. So volunteer sampling, you have probably done lots of volunteer sampling and maybe not known it. Uh, in this form of sampling, you allow participants to volunteer to participate. You don't randomly choose participants, rather you invite members of the population to participate and you take whoever comes. These are very, very, very common and are usually referred to as non-scientific studies. Um, these are more of like surveys and the results are not reliable. Um, so some examples are Yelp, um, on any online survey really, right? You've probably seen some Facebook, Instagram surveys, right? Someone volunteers to do that. Um, the problem with these, the major problem, is these data sets are usually not representative. Uh, some subgroups, subgroups are more inclined to participate than others, and the results will be biased towards their viewpoints. Right, when you see online surveys, you only participate maybe if the survey is interesting to you, and so it would be biased towards that. <clears throat> um, Yelp, right? People tend to review on Yelp because they really, really love a place or because they really hate a place and kind of those in-between people don't write reviews. So volunteer sampling is not a good method. Um, there is one case where volunteers are okay. Um, so human participants in design studies are usually volunteers. So if they're testing out a new medicine or vaccine, right? People volunteer to sign up. But the difference here is having participants volunteer does not hurt the results as long as the experiment involves randomization to deal with confounding variables. So as long as we're randomly assigning groups, it's okay that they volunteered for the project, right? But they didn't volunteer for their treatment. We randomly assigned the treatment. So it's different than volunteer sampling. Um, another bad sampling method is convenient sampling. Um, this just means that we collect data that's convenient. Uh, perhaps we survey people we know, right? If any of you had to go do a survey right now, you'd probably just survey your family members or friends, right? That's people you know. Or people that go to your school, right? You'd survey the class. We make no attempt to give every member of the population an equal chance. And we simply just collect data from whatever sources are most convenient to us. So examples could be like if you had a survey, you survey your friends or your family. Or maybe you work at Starbucks, so you survey customers at Starbucks. Right, it's convenient because maybe you work there. That's not representative of all people, right? It's just people that go to Starbucks. So this would be a bad sampling method. These data sets are not representative. Um, those who you normally associate with are probably more likely to have p opinions similar to yours. Um, and so this would be biased towards your own viewpoint. And that's convenient sampling. Um, one more bad one and we'll look at some examples. Handpicking your data. You can tell by the name, that just sounds terrible, right? Handpicking your data. Um, this is a method where you purposely seek out data that meets a certain criteria, um, or you might even omit data that does not. So you just get rid of results that disagree. Um, <clears throat> so choosing a top 10 or a top 40, right? That's handpicking the top. Um, Examining only the results from the best or the worst performer on a test or a game or a sport. And then the worst case is just throwing out data that doesn't fit your theory. 
So that's terrible, right? You're making the data do what you want, but it's not real data anymore because you have edited it. So let's look at how things go so wrong. Um, so these are two things that really happened. And it just has to do with different sampling methods. So we have two surveys. We'll start with the first one. In the 70s, an advice columnist. Um, we probably don't see these in newspapers anymore, but you see it online, right? People giving advice. This used to be in the newspaper. Um, but an advice columnist, Ann Landers, published a letter from a young couple about to be married. And the letter said, so many of our friends seem to resent their children. They envy us and our freedom to go, they envy us and our freedom to go and come as we please. Then there's the man matter of money. They say their kids, keep them broke. Will you please ask your readers this question? If you had to do it over again, would you have children? And so I'm asking you, regardless of your opinion, after reading that sentence, I think I would say no, no way I would have kids, right? Even if you have kids, they're just, they make it sound terrible, right? So it makes sense that 70% of the readers said no, right? I think we were very influenced by the wording there. And then Good Housekeeping decides they are not okay with this, right? They are so offended that 70% of mothers or parents would say no. So they go and publish the, um, publish the results with a sidebar that says, all of us at Good Housekeeping um, know that no matter, no mother will be able to read Ann Sanders' report without passionately agreeing or disagreeing. We would like to know your re what your reaction is. Won't you therefore take a minute and let us know how you would answer the question? If you had to do it over again, would you have children? And they get totally opposite results. 95% say yes. So the point here is statistic, right? We have the same question and we're getting totally, totally different results. And so this is why sampling methods are so important. So I would argue they're probably both wrong. I think Ann Landers, um, they were both volunteer sampling. No one was obligated to reply, right? And I think with the Ann Landers one, right, she influenced you with the wording. I say, take that reading to anyone. If you read what I highlighted in pink, right, they're gonna say no, almost everyone. Especially if you don't give them a chance to think about it. Um, and then I would argue good housekeeping Maybe the wording is okay. Um, certain people subscribe to Good Housekeeping, right? I wouldn't say people who aren't parents, maybe. There's a lot less people subscribing to Good Housekeeping. So this would be biased towards their readers. Which probably has a lot more mothers than other places. Um, <clears throat> but they were both biased towards their readers. Um, and this is why volunteer sampling is so bad. We're getting totally different results. So as an informed adult, it's really important for us to question like, how did they get this data? So I have another example. Where we have some bad sampling methods. So let's criticize the sampling techniques basically what goes wrong in these studies. And we might not know what goes wrong. We're just gonna kind of guess what might have gone wrong. So in 1948, there was this Kinsey report on sexual behavior. Um, the statements of this report were treated as facts for decades. Um, so this is just, um, yeah, I'll finish the sentence. Um, however, so it was just a report on sexual behavior of people overall and they were treated as facts like and so we, um, we find out later that his sample contained a high percentage of prison inmates and known sex offenders. So I think we would all agree that sex offenders, right, have different sexual behaviors. Um, so how is the percentage different? So in real life, convicted criminals um, are less than 1%, um, but in the survey, they were 25% of the sample, of the male sample. So these sex offenders are taking up like 25%, when in real life, they're only 1%. So what went wrong? Um, first, right, it's not representative. Representative. Right, um, sex offenders or inmates are overrepresented. 
because the percent is so much higher. So we don't know what went wrong. Like, why did he survey so many convicted criminals? And so that's just things we're going to have to speculate. So we go back to our sampling methods. It could be that he handpicked them. Maybe he wanted those results, right? And maybe he specifically went to a prison because he wanted sexual behaviors to be worse. So it's possible he handpicked. Um, it's possible he worked in a prison and it was just convenient, right? They got all the time in the world so we could make them answer a survey. So I think it could be either one of those. So maybe it was convenience. We're just speculating. Maybe he worked in a prison. Or maybe it was handpicked. Right. He wanted those results. So he surveyed more inmates intentionally. All right, let's look at one more example. So one way MSNBC solicits the opinions of its news consumer is through an, its organization's Speak Out um, surveys online. So they use social media and television and radio um, to encourage the news consumers to go online and res um, respond to these various opinion polls um, about trending topics. Typically, they remain open. So to me, this is already sounding volunteer. What do we think, right? If they tell you on social media to, and they're encouraging you, right? They're not forcing you, they're encouraging you. So you're gonna volunteer to do that. Um, so in one ongoing Speak Out poll, MSNBC asks whether marijuana should be legalized or decriminal, decriminalized or illegal. As of May 10th, 2015, more than 26,000 responded and 77% indicated that marijuana should be legalized. Um, and so I think this is volunteer, right? And volunteer sampling means maybe people with strong opinions are more likely to respond. So someone who doesn't really care about marijuana, like good or bad, they're not going to reply. Um, really, probably a lot of people who want it legalized will reply to this. So bias towards those strong opinions, or maybe they want marijuana legal. It's also biased towards their own viewers. MSNBC viewers, right? Everyone doesn't watch MSNBC. So what is the view, the average viewpoint of an MSNBC view, um, viewer? So it's biased towards that as well. Cool, I just have a couple more examples. One more page if you're following along in the packet. A few other things that can go wrong. They're not quite sampling methods, but they're things that go wrong while we sample. So loaded questions, these are really bad. This is a survey question that has been worded in such a way that it encourages one answer over another. So I'm gonna read this question out loud and just answer immediately, don't think. Do you agree with most Americans that the super rich should have their taxes raised so they can start paying their fair share? Um, I'm going to say yes. I'm not even thinking about what the question is. Um, but this encourages a yes. So what is some of the wording that went wrong? So see if you can spot something that went wrong. There's more than one answer here. So I'll pause while you find something that maybe we should change. Okay. So I'm gonna give you a couple, I'm just gonna go in order so it might not be the first one you came up with. So I think one thing that goes wrong is agreeing with most. I think our natural, naturally we wanna agree with most people. So I would get rid of that. Um, but it is a loaded question because it encourages a yes. The bad wording would be agree with most. I think there's others, you might have spotted it. Um, super rich, did anyone catch that? Makes them sound like 
villains or something. And then what does super rich mean, right? Um, but they sound really evil to me in that sentence. And then there's one other thing that I think needs to go. Fair share. That's implying that it's not fair right now. Which maybe it's not. But we're kind of telling people that it's not fair. And that's something that someone needs to decide on their own. So I would reword this question and I would just say, do you support raising taxes on, and then I'm not gonna say super rich or rich, cause what does that mean? So it would be on the top 1%, right? 10%, like what did this person mean by super rich? Wage earners. So we should be a little bit more clear on what we meant by super rich. And now when we ask this question, someone can actually answer on their own. You might still say yes, right? But you had the opportunity to make that decision. Cool. So pause if you need a little bit more time. Um, I'm trying not to do too many breaks in the video so that others who are going fast aren't just like waiting for pauses. And with a video, what's great is you can just pause and catch up and you get to make it at your own pace. Um, so our final thing for this video is suspicious sources. Um, suspicious sources happen all the time, and it's when those conducting um, or funding the study have a vested interest. So commercials, almost all commercials would be an example of a suspicious source. right? Commercials make claims, and we really aren't sure if they're real or not because that's who's paying for them. So Jenny Craig... We've probably heard of that, maybe not, but it's just like Weight Watchers, right? Some weight loss system. They ran an ad, sorry for the typo, comparing their program to Weight Watchers. Um, the commercial claimed that a study had shown that Jenny Cray clients, on average, lost over twice as much weight as those on the largest weight loss program. And so this is suspicious, right? Because Jenny Craig paid for the ad. Um, does that mean just because it's a suspicious source that it's not true? No, um, it doesn't mean it's true either. We just don't know. Um, I would say if this is something that's interest to you, um, I would dig a little deeper. And so by digging a little deeper, we could see how did the, we could investigate how was the study conducted. Did they use random, right? Make sure they're using, did they use good methods? You'll notice in the bottom corner, they often show one person losing weight and they say this isn't typical, right? Because they're only showing you an individual person and they're not showing it being repeated. And so that's not a good method because it's not being replicated. They're only showing a single person. So you want to make sure they're using good sampling methods. All right, and that's the end of this section.